cold, though, isn't it? It's cold. <laughs> The winter months, they can really create some obstacles for a cyclist to overcome. And depending on which part of the world you live, these can range from a light frost through to black ice, a Siberian blizzard and rabid polar bears. Polar bears? But maybe not polar bears. But whatever the obstacles you're facing, in this video, we're going to show you how to overcome them. Let's start off with something that can put a lot of people off winter riding, the expense. Yes, winter riding, it can be expensive, but it doesn't have to break the bank. Now you could go out and buy all the winter kit available, and we're not saying you shouldn't do that, but you don't have to. You should start off with some of the essentials. Yeah, we suggest you get yourself a good pair of bib tights, a good cycling jacket, and then move on to a pair of gloves and some overshoes. With these essentials, you should be able to get started and get out and ride in the winter. You don't have to go overboard. The type of kit you get depends on the temperatures you're going to be riding in. Here in the UK, we could probably get away with a gabber and some bib tights, but anywhere colder, you might want some deep winter kit. If you've got a nice fancy bike and it's your pride and joy, then the thought of taking it out on grimy, dirty, wintry roads and conditions, well, it can be horrifying. It can. A lot of riders and cyclists will invest in a winter bike that can deal with all the elements. No, it doesn't have to be expensive. Steel or alloy with some bomb-proof wheels will do nicely. Yeah, and some lower spec components as well, but if you only have one bike and don't want to spend money on a, on a second one, don't worry, you don't have to, but just be aware that winter riding conditions can take a much bigger toll on your components, so make sure you clean them more regularly and make sure that the bearings and other working parts are greased. The winter, it can bring some pretty horrendous weather conditions that can put the keenest of cyclists off. The hardest part is getting out the door. Once you're out there, you are gonna love it. So how can we make getting out the door that little bit easier? No, one of the things is to get your kit and your bike ready the night before. That way, when you wake up first thing in the morning, it's all piled up and you've got less of an excuse not to go. Yeah, true. And a good cup of coffee. That will get any cyclist out the door. So pop the kettle on. Love a good brew. And it sounds obvious, but check the weather and the conditions that you're going to be riding in so that you can dress appropriate, appropriately for them and probably pack a spare waterproof as well, just in case. It can get cold, can it? But please remember, if it is really cold and really icy, don't go out and risk it. It's much better to take the day off and ride indoors than risk crashing. Absolutely. And if the temperature does plummet, but it's still safe to go out and ride, then I'd highly recommend that you plan a route that sticks more sort of main roads and busier roads like the one we're on now, as these are generally better maintained and are also more likely to be gritted and salted to reduce that risk of black ice compared to little tiny lanes. And when planning your route, maybe plan a shorter route and keep your intensity high, so maybe you've got some effort. Ready for another effort, Ollie? Oh. Come on. She always does this. Time. It stops for no one. But wouldn't it be awesome if you could actually stop time? I mean, you could sort of pause time, go out for as long a ride as you like, and not have to worry about making it back in time for your chores and other life commitments. But unfortunately, no one has quite mastered the ability to control time. Yes, it is a valuable excuse not to get out and ride, but there are a few little things that we can do to help making time that little bit less daunting. Sorry, I was just thinking about pausing time again. But anyway, I mean, you can consider riding in the dark. It's something that a lot of people never really think of doing, but doing it can actually mean that you have hours to ride that you didn't think you normally had. And in the winter, there are shorter daylight hours. But we've done some really good videos recently on how to ride in the dark, so make sure you check those out. And if you invest in a good quality set of lights, there's nothing to stop you. Mm, or lunch rides, they're my favorite. Make most of the daylight and head out. I mean, an hour is long enough to get a really good ride in. Oh, something else nearly forgot, commuting. If you live a commutable way 
to work, then why not consider cycling? It has a whole host of benefits. Keeps you fitter, it can save you money, helps save the polar bears, and if you live in a city, it can be quicker and more efficient than you know using motorized forms of transport. And you don't have to commute the whole way on bike if it's too far. You could perhaps commute part of the way. Get the train yeah. with your bike, yeah, that's a good idea. So in short, there is time to fit riding into your schedule. No matter how long or short you have, something is better than nothing. We know many of you enjoy riding with others and the social aspect that cycling brings. But just because it's winter and there's fewer people riding, doesn't mean you have to ride on your own. You could organise a group ride on the weekend from your local cafe or a midweek night ride. The best place to start is by contacting your local cyclists and friends to see if they're keen. And if you're relatively new to cycling or you've just moved to a new area and you're unfamiliar with it, a great place to start is your local bike shop. This is a great place where you can meet other people and get in contact with cyclists to ride with or you could consider seeing if there's a local cycling club you can join that's also great have a look on social media and if there isn't a cycling club in your area why not set one up exactly why not before you know it you'll have a designated time and place you meet every week Some cyclists think riding in the winter is just too hard physically, but with some nice warm kit and a nice route, easy spins can still happen. And the best bit about winter riding for me is that the coffee stops and the hot chocolates just taste so much sweeter. Oh God, I love, I love hot chocolates. Yeah. And mince pies oh, as well. Oh, my favourite. Oh, I love it. love it. Well, I hope you found this video useful. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up. Bye. I'll see you. Bye. Happy time. Oh, yes.